It's now been two weeks since Vermont's legislative session wrapped up, and that means a steady flow of bills are hitting the governor's desk. Some have already been vetoed. One of those is an updated renewable energy standard. NBC5 Stephen Biddix joins us now. And Stephen, you had a chance to speak with people on both sides of the issue today. Yes, Brian and Liz. So the Scott administration feels these changes cost too much and would hurt ratepayers, and they proposed a better plan after going through an 18-month engagement process. But the legislature approved a standard that would require most retail electricity providers to be on 100% renewable energy by January of 2030 and global foundries and municipal providers by 2035. It also requires Vermont to find ways to produce more renewable energy in state. Those in support of the bill say it would reduce carbon emissions to the equivalent of taking 240,000 cars off the road and help reduce climate change, saving Vermonters money in the long term. While Scott and cabinet members say costs are adding up and the proposed standard will cost up to $450 million on Vermonters over the next 11 years, adding that lawmakers' plan is geared to helping providers rather than the public. Who is it serving? And so you look at it and you realize that the folks who are going to benefit most from this legislation are folks who get paid to invest capital and who can pass those costs on to the consumer. If Vermont can take a step for a minimal rate impact that reduces pollution, equivalent to taking 240,000, almost a quarter million cars off the road, that is an important thing we can do today to fight climate change. To override, the Senate will need two more yes votes in the House, one vote to hit that key two-thirds majority required. Stephen, we'll have to see what kind of support can be shored up over the next month, but what about the bill banning a popular pesticide that's used in agriculture? Yes, Brian, that bill is also now going to be taken up in this summer's veto session, and supporters say it's crucial because it will help the state's pollinator population, which they say is declining. Certain uses of neonicotinoid pesticides like sprays would be banned in 2025, and neonic treated crop seeds in 2029. Dairy farmers have been against this bill because neonic treated seeds is how they feed their cattle, and they'd have to get their manufacturers to agree to create new seeds just for them. Governor Scott has called the bill more anti-farmer than pro-pollinator and says it's a part of his job to look at all aspects of bills and who they affect. Scott also said in his veto letter, pollinator populations are rising according to national data, but supporters say that's just not true after their own research. And that bill did make it through the House and Senate with a veto-proof majority. So that's the bad news for a lot of Democrats in the legislature, Stephen, but the governor did sign the budget late yesterday. What made that possible? Yes, Liz, this year's budget sings up to the tune of $8.6 billion. And while Scott isn't thrilled with some of the fee increases and there's new base spending in the budget that will impact future budgets, he says he feels it does more good than harm and shows compromise is possible in Montpelier because all sides had to give up something they wanted. The Scott administration is also appreciative of the fact that the House's three different tax packages did not make their way in. We worked on a deal, something we could live with and something they could live with, and they had to give up a lot as well. So, again, it can be done, um, and, and not everybody gets what they want, uh, but, um, but that's when, you know, usually a, a deal makes sense. The governor's comments on the compromise are significant considering Scott has vetoed the budget in recent years, most recently just last year. And while the budget won't be on the line this year, the veto session is set for June 17th. And we know those two bills we just mentioned right now are the only ones up for a vote, but we do expect more to come in throughout the coming weeks. Live in the newsroom, Stephen Biddix, NBC5 News. Stephen, thanks. Lots of information there.